Good evening, it's 8 o'clock. The top headlines tonight. The government attempts to reset the narrative. A major corona compensation scheme likely to be announced. Sources tell NDTV that the government is planning a big compensation announcement for families where people have lost their lives. The Prime Minister meets with Amit Shah and the BGP President JP Nadda. This is after he's reviewed the performances of ministers and ministries. There could be a cabinet expansion soon. From Prime Minister Modi back to Chief Minister Mamta Banerjee, BGP Vice President Mukul Roy returns to the Trinamool Congress. Mamta Banerjee says the prodigal son has returned home. She also says that Mukul Roy was threatened with agency cases and that's why he joined the BGP out of fear. The big question, will this lead to more Bengal BGP MLAs following Mukul Roy back to the Trinamool? The Prime Minister and the Uttar Pradesh Chief Minister's one-on-one -on -one meeting in Delhi for nearly an hour. The Uttar Pradesh Chief Minister will be the BGP Chief Minister to face in next year's elections, but the BGP High Command's impact on the Yogi Cabinet is likely to be seen as it's reshuffled. No emergency use approval for Covaxin in the USA says that country's regulator, but India says it doesn't impact our program. Our regulator has cleared Bharat Biotech's vaccine. Also, Covaxin's phase 3 results are likely to be out by next week, says Dr. Paul of the Niti Aayog. NDTV exclusive, the US President's medical advisor, Dr. Anthony Fauci on NDTV. He says extending the duration between vaccine doses can leave us vulnerable to variants. He adds that he saw the problem in UK where they extended uh, vaccine, the interval between vaccine doses. Across India, as fuel prices rise, Congress protests at petrol pumps in different states. But Sachin Pilot, meanwhile, also joins Jaipur protest, says he's not in touch with the BJP. Says that the BJP UP minister, who said she's in touch with him, may have been talking about Sachin Tendulkar, but not him. Markets at a record high once again at the close of this week as COVID infections have dropped. Market surge. And the monsoon is racing across India. It's likely to be in Delhi by early next week. Very heavy intense rainfall is predicted in Mumbai and Thane for two days as well as heavy rain predicted in Kerala from tomorrow. The monsoon is now likely to reach Delhi almost two weeks early. And PK to meet SRK, Jab they met, that's the story we'll have more details on. Meanwhile, he also has lunch with Sharad Pawar. Prashant Kishore's Mumbai visit has much speculation around it. Meanwhile, our lead story tonight being reported by Akhilesh Sharma is about the possibility of a big new social scheme, a compensation scheme for victims of corona and their families. Also, of course, the Prime Minister's meetings this evening with the Home Minister Amit Shah and BGP President JP Nadda on a range of issues, including, well, how ministries and ministers are performing, a possible cabinet expansion and much more. Akhilesh has the details. Akhilesh, what do you know about these review meetings the Prime Minister's been having? He's met several ministers one on one and now Amit Shah and JP Nadda this evening. Well, the sources are tight-lipped, Sonia, about uh, the subject of the meetings, but we know for certain that Prime Minister Narendra Modi, on each anniversary of his government, takes this kind of exercise, where he conducts a review, detailed review, along with the minister and senior officials of the different ministries, and uh, the performance is reviewed every year. This year, due to COVID, uh, this review exercise has been postponed a bit, but now uh, a cabinet expansion is also being talked about because since 2019, uh, the Prime Minister Narendra Modi has not expanded his cabinet. Uh, there are uh, there can be around 79 ministers in the cabinet, but so far only around 54 are there. So 24 can be accommodated in the cabinet. So this is what is one subject which is being talked about. There are certain ministers, more than uh, five to six ministers, who are holding more than one or two portfolios. And there is also question about their performances because we have seen that how uh, several ministers have come under severe criticism due to their mishandling of the COVID situation in the country. So that is one criteria which can be discussed. And of course, a second point which is being talked about these uh, high level discussion is that uh, the government is also contemplating 
uh, a compensation package for all the COVID victims and the families of COVID victims across the country. And in the next hearing in the Supreme Court, the government may give details to the court about this. This is another possibility which is being discussed. But yes, these meetings are going on for quite some time now. Every day around four to five hours, uh, Prime Minister Modi, BJP President J.P. Nadda, and Home Minister Amit Shah. They are meeting with the uh, meeting with the different uh, ministers right. along with senior officials and reviewing their performances. Right. Uh, so a report card in a sense and also resetting the narrative after that COVID pandemic and the lives lost there. Uh, Akhilesh, thanks very much for that. But meanwhile, in a week of political defections after uh, the Congress of Jitin Prasad went to the BJP, a major blow for the BJP in West Bengal and nationally because the BJP National Vice President Mukul Roy has returned to the Trinamool Congress and to Chief Minister Mamta Banerjee's political party. He said that he felt that he couldn't work in the BJP. He wanted to come back. But Mamta Banerjee was much stronger, saying that he only went to the BJP because he was threatened with cases by the CBI and other agencies against him. So he feels that his old party is good and always old is always gold. Three years, nine months and Mukul Roy is back home to a welcome much warmer than anything he may have expected. Mamta Banerjee's words without any rancor calling Mukul Roy's return the return of the native, a homecoming. Mukul ke amra wamadar ghare di chile, ghare pidlo, ei jono amra obinamdan janachi. Not just words, optics too. The Trinamool's newly appointed All India General Secretary, Abhishek Banerjee, differences with whom was one of many reasons for Mukul Roy's departure, was the one who garlanded him back. আমার অত্যন্ত ভালো লাগছে যে ভারতীয় জনতা পার্টি থেকে বেরিয়ে এসে এই নতুন আঙিনায় আমি যাদের সাথে দেখা হচ্ছে কথা হচ্ছে কথা বলতে পারছি আমার খুব ভালো হচ্ছে বেস্ট উইশেস ফর আ নিউ ইনিংস ইন হিজ ওল্ড পার্টি দ্য বিজেপি সেড ডিসমিসিং মুকুল রয়স ডিপারচার অ্যাজ অফ লিটল কনসিকুয়েন্স বাট ইটস আ ব্লো ফর দ্য বিজেপি coming as it does just a month after the loss of face in the Bengal polls and growing anxiety over the Uttar Pradesh elections early next year. In the Bengal government, there is no longer a man in the Bengal government. In the Bengal government, there is no longer a man in the Bengal government. And there is no trust in them. So, the party has also been in the same way. इनके बारे में भी तथ्य सबके पास था कि ये पार्टी के अंदर नहीं बातें टीएमसी के पास पहुंचाते हैं। मुकुल रॉय इज बैक होम आफ्टर दैट हेडलाइन ग्रैबिंग प्रेस कॉन्फ्रेंस। बट इफ हिज रिटर्न टू द ट्रिनमल कांग्रेस ट्रिगर्स एन एक्सोडस फ्रॉम द सैफ्रिन पार्टी, द बीजेपी कुड एंड अप विथ एग ऑन इट्स फेस। सोर्सेस से मुकुल रॉयज होमकमिंग इज पार्ट ऑफ ममता बनर्जीज स्ट्रेटजी टू स्ट्राइक द आयन वाइल इट्स हॉट। and demolish the BJP in the state. Mukul Amadeh Dole is the one who 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 is the one. There is a sword hanging over Mukul Roy's head. The Narada bribery case in which he is named in the FIR and threats on account of which may have forced his exit from Trinamool. I am not asking you. Now everybody is facing that it is nothing new. So from seven years it is going on. Let them to settle the case immediately. Sarada Narada, Trinamool Congress is not at all responsible for this. It is the BJP party. Now that he has shrugged off the BJP's so-called protective shield, could an arrest be imminent? Roy was underused by the BJP, perhaps at its own peril. He is possibly one of the first moves by the Trinamool Congress on the chessboard target 2024. With D.D. Shankar and Saurabh Gupta, Monadipa Banerjee, NDTV. Well, the other big political story, the Chief Minister of Uttar Pradesh, Yogi Dityanath, met with the Prime Minister for a one-hour, one-on-one meeting today, along with, of course, meeting the BGP President. Yesterday, he met Home Minister Amit Shah as well.
Sources say that it is now certain that uh, the chief minister will be the BGP's chief ministerial face going into the 2020 UP elections as well. However, he has been told there must be a course correction and the BGP high command's stamp will be very evident on the coming up UP cabinet reshuffle. Amid political confusion in Uttar Pradesh and with less than a year left for state elections, Chief Minister Yogi Adityanath met Prime Minister Narendra Modi today in Delhi. The meeting lasted for more than an hour. Tweeting about it, Yogi Adityanath said, Today I had the privilege of meeting with respected Prime Minister Modi and get his guidance. I wholeheartedly thank him for taking out time from his busy schedule for the meeting and the council. With less than a year for the assembly elections in the state, BJP is trying to set its house in order in UP. Party sources say very soon there will be a rejig in the state government, including induction of A.K. Sharma, close confidant of Prime Minister Narendra Modi in the state cabinet. Sources, however, also say that there is no question of Yogi Adityanath being replaced as the chief minister of UP. So while it seems clear that Yogi Adityanath will continue as the chief ministerial face of the BJP for the 2022 elections, he has been asked to do a major course correction. First indications of which will be in the UP cabinet reshuffle expected soon. Key to this is accommodating the Prime Minister's chosen man in Uttar Pradesh, A.K. Sharma. Gujarat Kader, ex-IAS officer who was made a MLC in January this year and is in charge of development works in the Prime Minister's constituency, Baranasi. Also addressing criticism of Thakur Raj with the inclusion of a Brahmin leader like Jitin Prasad in the cabinet expansion. At his meeting with the BJP president later, the chief minister apparently was given a reality check on the feedback General Secretary B.L. Santosh had received from state BJP leaders during his recent Lucknow meetings. Party leaders and MLAs have openly criticized the functioning of the chief minister Yogi Adityanath. The inaccessibility of him to party MLAs and MPs and also poor handling of the pandemic have led to the intervention of the party leadership. Taking a dig at the Chief Minister's two-day visit to Delhi, Samajwadi Party Chief Akhilesh Yadav, whose party did well in recent Panchayat elections, in a tweet said that Adityanath is knocking different doors to safeguard his chair. While that seems safe for now, the Chief Minister and the BJP have to work at addressing the discontent of the people of the state who faced a harrowing ordeal in the worst days of the pandemic. With Arvind Gunasekar, Usama Shab for NDTV. Well, the other big headline, fuel prices are up again today, the latest in a series of hike in just this June. And the Congress has today held protests across India at petrol pumps. The Congress protests against these rising fuel prices both in May and in June. And this, of course, as Sachin Pilot was also part of the Rajasthan protest, in the Congress Rajasthan protest, amid speculation about his political future. He said today that what BGP Minister Rita Bhagna Joshi had said about uh, him being in touch with him, while said that it must be a different Sachin Tendulkar, but not me. At a Congress party program in Jaipur in the morning, Sachin Pilot made it quite clear. For now, he is here to stay. Rita Bhagna Joshi ne jo kaha ki Sachin se baat kari hai, ho sakta na ni Sachin Dundukar se baat kari ho. Mere se baat hai nahi mat nahi. Soon after, he left for Delhi over reports that the Congress High Command had reached out to him. Sachin Pilot is still upset that 10 months after his MLA's resigned, a reshuffle of Chief Minister Gehlot's Council of Ministers is yet to take place. And even as Ashok Gehlot tweeted his respects to Sachin Pilot's late father Rajesh Pilot on his death anniversary today, the Ashok Gehlot camp downplayed the rumblings. But clearly, with Jitin Prasad's exit from the Congress, the dissent in the Rajasthan Congress has once again come into focus. With Harsha Kumari Singh in Jaipur, Anusya Mathur for NDTV. 
Meanwhile, politics is on the menu for lunch as well as Sharad Pawar of the NCP met today with political strategist uh, Prashant Kishore, who of course assisted Mamta Banerjee and MK Stalin in the recent elections. This of course has created speculation about Prashant Kishore's mission 2024, bringing together opposition parties for an alliance against uh, Prime Minister Modi and the BJP. Sources close to Prashant Kishore said he'll meet every leader's extended support to Mamta Banerjee and MK Stalin in these recent elections. Along with that meeting, Prashant Kishore also meeting with superstar Shah Rukh Khan this evening in Mumbai. Not clear exactly what that meeting is on, but apparently they've met through Mamta Banerjee and Shah Rukh Khan wants Prashant Kishore's inputs now for charity work. Well, moving on to other news. Well, the big story, of course, remains our tracking of the COVID data. And the good news is that we're below 1 lakh again with 91,702 new COVID cases and 3,403 deaths in the last 24 hours. The deaths also, of course, high because many states are now reconciling their death data. So that's why it's down 44% only because death data was reconciled was very high yesterday. The tests are up very slightly. The positivity rate is at 4.4%, which is, again, it's good news because we are below 5%. The vaccination, however, is down by 3%. It's over 32 lakhs, but we're still way below, way below what our ambitious national target is. Let's just look at the daily cases because of course as we said they're below 1 lakh again and if you look at the positivity rate today the 7 day average is 5.2% now that's the lowest since March the 28th so that's great news with the positivity rate coming down as well. In other news well the United States uh, federal regulator has said no to emergency use for Bharat Biotech's Covaxin. They've said that the company should actually apply for full approval route so they're not going to give emergency use uh, authorization but that doesn't mean that they've rejected it however india has said that this doesn't impact our vaccination program because our indian regulator has cleared it also that phase three trial results of covaxin will be out by next week we respect that decision and we expect that our manufacturer will be able to comply with it by doing whatever it requires to be done it has no impact whatsoever on our own program. And I am telling you that their phase 3 publication will be in any way in the next half hour. We are doing okay and very well on our regulatory front. Their, their decision has no bearing on our track at this moment. And now an excerpt from our big exclusive, an interview with uh, the United States President's medical advisor, Dr. Anthony Fauci by Srinivasan Jain. You can watch that full interview at 8.30, but here's an excerpt of what he said about India's vaccination program. What's the guidance on the ideal time between dosages? Because here in India, we've been getting a lot of differing guidances. Yeah. Uh, it's been, the time has been expanded from six to eight weeks. Uh, it's now gone up to almost 12 to 16 weeks. Yeah. The ideal uh, interval between doses for the mRNA should be three weeks for the Pfizer and four weeks for the Moderna. One of the problems with extending mm. the duration is that you become vulnerable to the variants. And we've seen that in the UK where they have extended the, duration, the, the, the interval between the first and the second dose that in that period of time, you can become vulnerable to variants. So we recommend staying on right. schedule. However, if you have a very, very uh, small supply of vaccine, it may be necessary to extend it a bit. Well, moving now to the markets and the Sensex and the Nifty have closed at record highs once again. The Sensex up by 174 points, closing at an all-time high of 2,474. The Nifty 50 index advancing 62 points, closing at a record high once again. The market surge led by gains in IT and metal stocks. And the markets also expecting faster economic revival as the pace of new COVID infections declined. Well, also, what may be good news is the monsoon, which is actually racing across India. In fact, the May has recorded the second highest rainfall in 121 years, according to the weather department. Heavy rain now expected in coastal Maharashtra, moderate to intense spells of rain in districts of Palghar, Thane, Mumbai and Raigarh. And widespread heavy rainfall over coastal districts till the 15th of June. So in Mumbai, several areas are waterlogged because of this heavy rain. The Met Department has also warned that uh, there are likely to be 
very heavy, intense, long spells of rainfall over the next few days. So Mumbai, Thane, watch out for that heavy, heavy rain. Also heavy rain, very likely in Kerala, according to the Met Department as well. And as we just said that the monsoon really racing across India and because of that, Delhi is likely to get the monsoon much earlier than normal. In fact, the monsoon may hit Delhi as early as next week. The Met Department says that the Delhi monsoon will be two weeks earlier than expected and it's likely to cover India in the next three to four days except for Rajasthan and Kutch. So the monsoon really racing across India as we speak. Meanwhile, the latest from uh, cricket team India getting ready for their matches as they competed in an intra-squad match in England as they're gearing up for the World Test Championship final. The men in blue uh, last played competitive criti cricket during the Indian Premier League and are out of match practice but say they'll be fully ready going into the WTC final. Well, our special focus now. The last few months have been difficult for all of us. Loss despair and heartbreaking scenes at our own homes and from across the country. But amidst the chaos, if there is one thing that has grown faster than the pandemic, it is humanity. We've seen faceless strangers who've tried to help those who needed resources. Over the next few weeks, we want you to hear about these good Samaritans who have shown courage during these testing times to help those in need. Their selfless acts of kindness will be shared through Rukjana Nahi a limited video and audio series across eight episodes hosted by Bollywood actor Rajkumar Rao. We begin this Friday with a poem written by lyricist Swanand Kirkire and narrated by the actor. चाहे आए हजारों मुश्किलें चाहे अंधियारे बादल गिरे ये वक्त की आंधी आई है ऐसी विपदा दुश्मन पे भी ना गिरे चाहे कठिन हो घड़ी है दिल सुन तू जरा भी घबराना नहीं तेरा काम है चलते जाना तू हार कर रुक जाना नहीं ऐसी कई मिसालें मुल्क में हैं तू सुन ले उनका अफसाना एक रिक्शा वाला है जिसने मन में बस इतना है ठाना बिना शुल्क के निस्वार्थ भाव बीमार को अस्पताल पहुंचाना कहीं ऑक्सीजन का लंगर है लगा कहीं घर घर खाना पहुंचाना सोशल मीडिया की स्टोरीज का हेल्पलाइन अब बन जाना डॉक्टर नर्सेस का हफ्तों तक अपने घर ना पहुंच पाना चाहे कठिन हो घड़ी या दिल सुन तू जरा भी घबराना नहीं तू हालात बदलने निकला है तू हार कर रुक जाना नहीं कोई धीरज दे कोई साहस दे जिससे जो बना उसने वो किया आशा का दीपक हम सब ने कुछ भी करके बुझने न दिया तिनका तिनका करके यू आ पहुंचे देखो कहा तक हम रुक जाना नहीं एक जज्बा है जो दिखलाता इस देश का दम हम सब इस देश के बाशिंदे यहां कोई शख्स बेगाना नहीं हर दिल में गूंज रही एक बात ए दिल तो रुक जाना नहीं ए दिल तू रुक जाना नहीं ए दिल तू रुक जाना नहीं रुक जाना नहीं तू कहीं हार के 